Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm Dr. Nandita Shah, the founder of Sharan, and you're with Saturdays with Sharan, which happens on the third Saturday of every month. In this program, we have a format where we take one topic every uh, month and we talk about it. We have a few testimonials from our own facilitators, and then we have uh, one cooking demo. Today's topic is stress, overcoming stress, anxiety, and depression. So many of us are suffering from this, isn't it? And all of us have experienced this at some time in our life, even though it may not be overpowering or at a clinical level. But we are suffering from these kind of issues. And it's got worse after COVID, uh, COVID the pandemic, because you know we were indoors, we didn't have communication, but it has been there all these years, hasn't it? So how can we overcome this with plant-based nutrition? That's our topic for today. And after the uh, talk, as well as the testimonials, we'll have a cooking demo of Malay Peda. This is an Indian sweet dish, usually made from concentrated milk. But of course, we'll be making it vegan today. And Madhura, one of our facilitators, will be showing you this. And she used it as a comfort food, as a way to overcome depression. I hope it will help you as well. So let me share my screen right away. Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And why reconnection? One of the reasons that we aren't happy, we don't know what's happening, we're depressed or anxious, is because we are scared of the future. We are disconnected. We are disconnected from our source. We're disconnected from animals and nature. If we can reconnect and start living the way nature and God designed us to live, we will be well. So that's our topic for today. And before I go any further, let me call Madhura in to share her story. Madhura is one of our cooking instructors, nutritionists, and also she conducts programs like uh, affirmations and gratitude or raw challenge or fruit challenge challenges to help other people through the same paths that she has used to heal herself so madhura would you like to share your story regarding this hello everyone so i would definitely like to tell you how i overcame my depression and anxiety by following the sharon lifestyle so I come from this very heavy meat eating family and my father loved his fish and chicken. So I also followed into his footsteps. I really couldn't finish a meal without a piece of fish. Also, there was a lot of family trouble in my childhood. So I depended a lot on the greasy fried food for comfort. So very early in life, I faced a lot of health issues like there was a PCOD, hormonal imbalances. I had put on a lot of weight. Uh, there was depression and anxiety. So uh, it was a lot of troublesome childhood that I went through. But the turning point was when at the age of 25, suddenly I woke up in the morning and I had suffered a stroke. So now along with all these health issues, I was also on very heavy medication. I was taking steroids, antihypertension medication, uh, blood thinners, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, a host of medication was going on. And to top this, I have a doctor mother who couldn't figure out what is wrong with me. But the turning point was, you know, when, uh, so by the time I reached 30s, I was already obese. There was a lot of fatigue and a lot of side effects of these medications as well. But the turning point was when there was a gallbladder surgery and my then, by then my husband and family were really tired of whatever was happening. He got the whole food plant-based lifestyle home and overnight he decided, okay, let's change. 
but the depressed and anxious me was a little overwhelmed you know how can i do this but with every meal and every bite i realized that the calmness was coming in the clarity was coming in and i was feeling at peace and the best part was even after delivering two children with the weight that i had i had lost about 26 kg of weight the medication started coming off and i started feeling myself again so now life is simple and beautiful and i'm doing all these sharan programs and everything with peace uh yes now sometimes the flare ups happen and i do go through emotional outbursts but it's be a part and parcel of life i'm not bogged down by it anymore so i urge all of you to try this as well and get into a better lifestyle thank you so much wow madhura that was really some story and i know that it's so true because i know you since so long and i know how much you have progressed uh, through you know plant based diet and how passionate you are to spread this amongst other people and the fact that you're off all medication and totally healthy congratulations for that thank you doctor okay so back to my screen share sorry stress anxiety and depression really make us sad isn't it it's an acronym but it's sadness what is anxiety anxiety is feelings of fear and dread that just won't go away tension worried thoughts it can be accompanied with palpitation increased blood pressure increased blood sugars and you know madhura suffered from both anxiety and depression what is depression depression is a persistent feeling of sadness lack of interest not wanting to do anything wanting to sleep or even problems with sleep and tell me is there anyone who hasn't experienced this at least sometimes i'm sure we've all experienced it and maybe we haven't been totally into depression or anxiety and unable to come out of it but many of us may have experienced even that at some time in our life so what can we do about this usually we go to doctors and doctors give us medicines like antidepressants anti anxiety medicines or sleep medications and the problem with medications is that medicines anyway never cure so as long as we're taking medications we are somewhat in control but if we stop the medication they come back and medicines have so many side effects like they are very very addictive especially the anti anxiety anti uh, depression and sleep medications are so hard to let go of they also cause weight gain the especially the antidepressants they can cause constipation and dry mouth and nausea and drowsiness and sexual dysfunction sleep dysfunction fatigue all these together are so many and there can even be other side effects that come in the way and yet people continue the medications because the anxiety or depression is even more disturbing so it's so important that we think of ways in which we can decrease all this in our life and there's a close connection between the mind and body that means the mind uh, you know when we're stressed or anxious we can produce a variety of diseases that are linked to stress like diabetes and hypertension autoimmune diseases and skin diseases digestive issues acidity allergies and so on and you know whenever we have a disease we always look for the cause of the disease and try to remove it and the same we should do for diseases that are connected to stress we should remove the stress right and rather than just treat the disease and here i want to bring in palak palak suffered from 
suddenly found out that she had hypertension and as she held, you know, tried to get rid of her hypertension, she got rid of much more than just her hypertension. Palak is one of our facilitators. She's a cooking expert and she does amazing cooking classes under Sharan. Palak, would you like to share your story with them? Hello, everyone. I'm Palak Jain. Uh, it was November 2019. I went to the market and, and, and I fainted there. We went to the doctor and he told me that it was a hypertension shoot up and I was not having it before. So I was just a bit square, uh, scared of it, uh, that uh, of the word hypertension. And I was just 38 years old. So I was not ready to take the medication that the doctor has prescribed me. And uh, I, I thought that I just have to take few pills and I'll be okay. But he told me that I have to take it for the li lifelong and I was not ready for it. So I started doing my own research and that's how I came to know about Sharon. I started following the lifestyle and within no time I was off the medication and some more things happened in my life. I was sleeping like a baby. I would wake up in the morning with energy. There was no stress, anxiety and I was much peaceful and calmer. So I never knew that only food will help me to get rid of my uh, hypertension and my stress and anxiety also. So thanks. And also your sleep problem, right? Like, did you have a sleep problem before you uh, changed your diet? Yeah, uh, it was not a sleep problem. But yeah, I was able to feel that I was, I'm sleeping in a much better way. And when I'm uh, waking up in the morning, I was more energetic. Fabulous. Thank you, Palak, for sharing. So imagine that she tried to get rid of her hypertension by changing to a plant-based diet and those of you who have been following me you already know that hypertension can easily be reversed but she got so many other uh, improvements and the biggest change was in the state of mind that was amazing thank you Palak for sharing that story So, as I said, when we have high, uh, depression or anxiety, instead of taking medicines, we should look for the cause of that uh, depression or anxiety and then it's easy to remove. Now, I didn't know any of this and I also had experienced certain things that I want to share with you. I'm going to share with you my story. When I was young, I'm, uh, you know, for many, many years, right into my 40s, I would wake up with anxiety. And it was almost debilitating because I never wanted to wake up in the morning because the anxiety was so strong. But then it, as I got up and started with my daily work and things, my anxiety went away. Like Madhura, I also had a difficult childhood. And this could have contributed to it. <clears throat> anyway, when I was researching for this uh, program, I came across an article that said that many people suffer from morning anxiety, whether they have an anxiety disorder or not. I certainly didn't have an anxiety disorder, but I definitely suffered from morning anxiety. And when this went away, I didn't even notice so I was really surprised when it came back with a bang one day. I was, I had traveled from India to Spain, an overnight flight. And when I reached, I was tired and hungry. And I reached the exhibition hall and I saw lots of food available, but none of it was vegetarian. And I was totally vegan at that time. I saw lots of salads and all of them had cold cuts or eggs on top. And so I didn't find anything to eat except French fries. So I ordered some French fries and they came with ketchup and mayo on top. And, you know, I had become a vegan at that time, especially for um, animal rights. And I saw the health benefits after that. And so I thought to myself, should I get rid of the mayonnaise? And then I said, well, now I can't do anything for the uh, 
egg and I have made mayonnaise in my life and I know that mayonnaise is just one egg and lots of oil. So I said, I have only a little bit of egg on top of my French fries. Let me eat it. I enjoyed the French fries. I went to bed. I woke up the next morning or rather during the day, which was after a few hours with the same anxiety that I had experienced in my life before and I didn't know where it came from. I didn't bother about it at that time, but that anxiety didn't go away and stuck with me for 10 days. When I came back to India, one of my patients said the biggest change after changing her diet was in her state of mind. And she told me how her stress had gone away. And that's when I connected it to the French fries and mayo story that I experienced. And I wondered whether it was that little bit of mayonnaise that had brought back the anxiety in me. Now I realized that that was it. Because what had happened? You know, what is stress? Stress is something that we experience through hormones. Like, for example, dopamine makes us happy or uh, cortisol or adrenaline is stress hormone and so on. So we experience our emotions through hormones. And other animals in nature also experience their uh, emotions through hormones. So when we consume animal products, when we consume eggs of a hen that has been highly stressed, we may be consuming their emotions as well. And that's what I experienced when I experienced ate that mayonnaise. So I wasn't surprised when uh, I'm going to stop my share just now and bring in Sandhya Shri. I wasn't surprised when Sandhya Shri told me that she had experienced something very similar too. Sandhya Shri, would you like to share your story? Sure. So my name is Sandhya Shri. So I'm 48 years old and a mother to two beautiful girls aged 25 and 21. And I look a very happy mother, isn't it? So my story goes this way. As uh, Dr. Nandita mentioned that uh, the food we eat does, de definitely carries a certain kind of prana. And whole food plant-based lifestyle really, really initiates the process of understanding food prana. So I need to go a little back into 2003 to mention to all of you that my first breakthrough into understanding that my food has stress came when I experienced when I consumed fish to be a better lactating mother. So whenever I consumed fish, I realized that I was prone to stress and anxiety. And on understanding this, very soon I realized that it's not worth it and I gave up all non-vegetarian food. But that was not enough. My uh, entire twist with uh, uh, going through anxiety, going through stress didn't stop. It was only under control because I was also parallelly practicing mindful activities, journaling, meditation. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a holistic lifestyle coach. So all put together, still, it was not in a degree that was completely zero. There was something which was lurking into my space and I was not comfortable with it. So I kept looking into my uh, energy space, my work and what other people were doing. And that's when I dabbled upon this fantastic organization, Sharon. And they had a uh, seminar, a uh, uh, one day seminar. So I decided to go for it. So I went for the seminar and you won't believe it's just nine years back. But one thing that struck me was when she played a short five, seven minute video. And this video actually told me that there is so much that goes into bringing that one cup of milk on the table. Here I was assuming that I have given up meat and no longer I'm going to borrow any stress from any animal. Little did I know being a vegetarian, I'm still borrowing a lot of stress because that animal is giving a lot of itself to secrete that milk for me. And it was not even my food. And when that realization sinked in, I realized milk is nothing but liquid meat. 
So I gave up milk products, milk, everything that's related to milk. I turned into a vegan, more a whole plant-based uh, uh, lifestyle practitioner. It took me a while, but with all the help and workshops, I really went through very well. And today, I am nine years old into this lifestyle. I prefer to fast than to eat anything that has milk or any animal product in it. And the side effects is I have lost 21 kgs of weight. I have better energy than I had in my 20s. I no longer suffer from borrowed anxiety. If ever I have a palpitation or anxiety today, because I think I would be setting a very unrealistic standard if I say I don't have anxiety. I do have, but it comes because it's man-made, because I've created it myself. So I meditate more, journal more. So I would just say it's worth it. Thank you, Sandhya Shri, for sharing that. And truly, you don't look like a mother of uh, two girls that are already adults themselves. Yes. <laughs> So you look young and especially since you've lost weight, everything is looking really good. And uh, and you said that you have a big change in your state of mind, right? Yes, like, yes. Even though the anxiety comes sometimes, which it comes even for me, for all of us, but it's not that consistent state that we were in before. Isn't that true? Yes. The main difference is Dr. Nandita, it is not something which is unknown. When I was eating non-vegetarian food, when I was having consuming milk, the, uh, the sadness, the feeling of anxiety was unknown. I didn't know where it was coming from. Whereas now, I have so much clarity to understand it's coming because I have made this partnership with somebody or I've chosen to work with somebody whom I don't get along with or made a bad business decision. So that's the source. And the right food really, really gives you that clarity. As the Bhagavad Gita says, you are what you eat. And I definitely think it's the most natural way to eat is to eat whole food plant-based. Yeah, and I just to tell you, Sandhya, she is helping so, so many people with spiritual changes uh, through her facilitation. Congratulations, Sandhya, she, for all your work. Thank you. <laughs> So I and Sandhya Shri had very similar stories that we grew up with a certain amount of stress, anxiety, but it disappeared when we changed our diet. And Palak and Madhura also expressed something very similar. So what is stress? Stress is actually fear, isn't it? Like I'm stressed that I won't reach the airport on time or I'm stressed because of my exams or I'm stressed because of various things that are going on I'm always in a state of stress I'm in a state of fear that that means I'm in a state of fear I'm not saying that it's happening to me but that's what stress means now why do why are we in a society with so much stress since I live in nature I feel that whenever I go to a big city like Mumbai with all the high rises and the zooming cars, I feel energy of more stress than I feel in nature. Imagine if someone is sitting in a room, angry or upset or stressed. And if, uh, don't you feel that like if you are in the same room, even if you don't know the person, you may experience his emotions like you don't feel comfortable in a room with someone who's upset or angry because we can, you know, emotions are energy and we absorb that energy. Well, if you think about the earth as a big room where there's so many people suffering from separation or violence or fear or starvation or suffering, real situations that cause this suffering, and they have reasons to be stressed, that stressful energy is all over. Right now, we are 8 billion plus on the planet. Do you know that there are more than 80 billion, 10 times more, land animals being oppressed and violated just for our food. And that doesn't include the 
many times more sea animals. That means it's the stress of people around us, the stress of animals around us, and the stress of the you know, wildlife and fish and all the stress of all the sentient beings that we can experience just by living. And when we recognize that we are causing a lot of stress because of the food that we eat, we're not just uh, getting the emotions of the uh, animals vicariously through the environment, but we're also getting it directly through the food that we eat because when we consume the food, we're consuming those hormones. When Sandhya Shri was consuming that fish, she was consuming the stress hormones of that fish. When Sandhya Shri was consuming the dairy, and same with me, I was consuming the stress hormones of the cow who's artificially inseminated, has her baby taken away from her so that we can consume the dairy. When we change this, we experience less stress, even though it didn't go away altogether. We all live in the same world and eventually whatever happens to one affects us all, which is why Dr. Algebert Schweitzer said, until he extends the compassion, the circle of his compassion to all living beings, man will himself not be free. So eating right reduces stress, anxiety, and depression just because we are what we eat. That's what Sandhya Shri said. The prana, the food that we eat becomes our, our own thing, our own flesh. And so the feelings of the animals are transmitted through us, to us, their insecurity, their forsakenness, their hopelessness and despair, and their fear. All these are borrowed emotions. Like when we have certain situations, we're anxious, that's normal, that's okay. And then when the situation passes, that stress passes as well. But when we are constantly in a state of anxiety, stress, and depression, these are not our emotions, but they are emotions coming to us through the environment and through the food we eat. And my patients started, when I asked them, started telling me that they had noticed a lot of difference in the state of mind through the changes in their diet. For example, they experienced more clarity. They were more relaxed, more grounded, more a feeling of security. I know that when I was a child, I was very insecure because of the situation in my family and also because of my state of mind and definitely because of the food I was eating. I grew up as a vegetarian, but that made me consume dairy all through the day. And more confidence and, of course, more contentment. And this is what all of us have experienced, all the facilitators who are sharing their experiences. Just now, I want to ask Raji. Raji is from Abu Dhabi. She's one of our facilitators. And she's a um, yoga teacher now. Raji, would you like to share your story of coming out of stress? Sure, doctor. I'm Raji Vivek. I'm a yoga therapist from Abu Dhabi. Prior to my yoga career, I was working in IT industry for 15 years. Let me share my story. In 2008, on the first day of uh, first marriage anniversary, I asked my husband, is there any one positive change that you want to see in me? You know, it was a very early stage in our marriage. So I really wanted to take my husband's opinion. And he politely said, work on tranquility. I didn't even know the meaning of the word. He explained, learn to be calm through ups and downs of your life. When I gave a little bit more thought, I realized that exactly what I needed. I've been always anxious through school, college, work. There is this 
constant fear as doctor mentioned in her slide it is like uh, the state of fear worrying thoughts that is what i was experiencing and i kept suppressing my inner voice and i kept moving on with that fear you know i tried to change jobs my uh, different domains different countries to understand maybe my next move will bring me peace but then that anxiety wouldn't go away so slowly i turned towards yoga and uh, i was doing yoga for few years and i found much more calm and um, i dive deep into the philosophy of yoga i came across ahimsa i thought as a vegetarian i am not taking any animal meat so i am uh, already following the path of ahimsa but i was totally wrong when i came across the cruelty in the dairy industry i immediately uh, quit milk and i could see my health is slowly improving there is a clarity in 2019 i came across uh, sharan and i read doctor's book reversing diabetes in 21 days through that book i made the connection about the yogic path of life and a whole food plant based lifestyle how when we reconnect back to the nature our body heals and uh, you know our health uh, we realize our health potential i slowly removed all the refined products sugar coffee and i could see i am able to think much more clearly by 2020 i was able to shift from it industry into the wellness and i could relaunch myself into the wellness uh, as a wellness coach so now i conduct lot of programs in sharan combining both yoga and whole food plant based and i not only see the health potential in me and i i'm able to see that health improvement in my participants so it has been really rewarding journey and uh, i wish i have done this sooner thank you doctor thank you raji for sharing that and tell me you were a, a computer a, you were a it professional you were doing so much work getting so much recognition and obviously a high salary and things have changed a lot because now you're a yoga teacher and a facilitator with sharan and it's probably not as lucrative as before how did you decide to make that decision it was a uh, very difficult so uh, throughout my i've been at you know in it industry for 15 years and um, after few years i realized this is not it every time every year i will say i will quit this year but i didn't get that courage or clarity when i saw that when i moving into uh, you know reconnecting with nature a whole food plant based lifestyle there was clarity i could clearly see money is the not the only thing so when we realign our life with our purpose everything will fall in place i slowly uh, gain that confidence and security in me so i would uh, you know it was a slow process but it took some years for me because it was not difficult i used to love my team i was afraid i will miss that social network and everything but um, now i i'm extremely enjoying this new life i'm connecting with new people working with uh, you know like minded people in sharan so it's much more rewarding and raji has been conducting uh, programs like dairy free challenge and oil free challenge and various programs to get back to health combining yoga and uh, whole food plant based lifestyle and has helped so many people get well thank you raji for that thank you doctor okay i'm going to go back to my screen share now and when we are stressed we often go to comfort foods don't we and that's what madhura talked about when she was talking about um you know when she was young she would be eating all these comfort foods and gain so much weight and madhura is going to show us a recipe that she could use as a comfort food and yet be healthy so that's coming soon but when we eat these comfort foods 
and I'm just going to go back to the slide. What are comfort foods? They're foods full of salt and sugar and oil, refined flour, even meat and Coke and soft drinks, junk foods that aren't healthy at all. And when we consume these things, the cycle of stress and anxiety perpetuates because though the comfort foods help us a little, they promote stress in the end. Have you heard that our gut is our second brain? That we also have emotions through our gut. That's why we say gut feeling. And, you know, in order to have a healthy gut, we need a good microbiome. And a good microbiome is promoted by fiber. Fiber is a prebiotic that helps good bacteria grow. And the good bacteria take care that bad bacteria do not perpetuate. Junk food usually ends us, especially sugar, ends us up with uh, bad bacteria in our uh, gut, which we don't want. And so we can improve our gut microbiome just by eating more fruits and vegetables. Only plants contain fiber. There's no fiber in animal products. And there's no fiber in or less fiber even in refined plant foods. So we want to eat whole plants so that we have a good microbiome, so that we can reduce our stress even in that area. And that's what Raji did. She not only became plant-based when she recognized uh, you know, the suffering in the dairy industry, but she also became whole food plant-based and that improved everything a lot. Tea and coffee can also cause stimulation, which is stress, you know, where when we get stimulated, we get stressful, hyperactive, can't sleep. And all these disturbances can be caused by tea and coffee, which is why we always recommend no tea and coffee as well. Sugar is another thing that causes hyperactivity, mood swings and irritability. And it raises our dopamine levels. So it's a comfort food. It makes us feel good, which later, you know, drops and then we experience depression. And so sugar is also something that causes depression. And that's why we want to get rid of all these products. Dr. Neil Nedley has written two amazing books, Proof Positive and Depression the Way Out. Dr. Neil Nedley was, uh, you know, practicing in the middle of America, where, which is cattle country. And he realized through his general practice that a lot of people were suffering from depression and anxiety. And they were even on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications. And he, and he realized that this depression and anxiety was even more common than physical disease. And so he started helping people reverse depression through retreats, through consultations. And he also started a restaurant, a vegan restaurant in the middle of cattle country, imagine. But there were long lines outside his vegan restaurant just because of the way people were feeling by eating that good food. So he's written this beautiful book, Depression the Way Out, and he also does retreats for people who want to get out of depression. And these retreats are short, just 11 days or 14 days to help people out of depression and out of medications for depression. I think that's totally amazing. So now what can we do to be free of these emotions or at least as free as is possible and reduce our stress levels? Number one, of course, is a plant-based diet. Eat only plants and that too, as whole food as possible. The second is recognize the problem and accept it. Like, for example, if we're alcoholic, but, did, you know, don't accept that we're actually alcoholic, we're likely to not find a solution for it. So if you're stressed, anxious or depressed, recognize that this is a problem 
And now we are on the path to finding a solution. Look for other causes of the problem and work at that level, at the level maybe of past traumas. And I have to say that I worked for many years as a homeopath. And as a homeopath, one always has to connect mind and body. And so when I would interview my patients, I was understanding their stress, what it came from. And that really helped me connect to many things in my own past because in the end, we, are all, we all have the same problems. It just looks a little different. And so that helped me overcome my own problems as well. So when we get to our past traumas, when we look at them and recognize that they are past and now things have changed and we can change our life by getting out of reacting from the past and reacting only from the present, that will change a lot of things. And this can also be helped by professionals like counselors can be helpful. Also, it's important to make sure that we're purposefully occupied. Like when Raji was telling me her story, she told me that she wanted to, wanted to change her occupation. She wanted to do more yoga, but she found it difficult to leave her job. I was the same. I knew that I had to spread plant-based nutrition because it had helped me so much. But it took me some time to transition from a doctor treating with medicines to a doctor treating with no medicines and helping patients become their own best doctors. It's also important to have regular and routine me time, like meditation or prayer or spirituality. And it's important to find our spiritual purpose. We are all here with a spiritual purpose in our, in our destiny, but sometimes we're too busy with our jobs. Like Raji was too busy with her IT job to get into the occupation that she really wanted to be. And thanks to her husband, she's there now. Similarly, uh, you know, I changed my profession and now I really feel I'm living my spiritual purpose. And I'm sure that Madhura feels the same way and Sandhya Shri feels the same way. So we all have to look into what did we really, what, what were we really meant to do in this lifetime? And then money or fame, everything else doesn't matter anymore. Now, what else can help? gratitude. Madhura conducts programs on gratitude because when we can be more in, you know, gratitude is our highest emotion. And when we can be more in gratitude, our uh, stress goes away. I often tell patients that before you go to bed, write down in a journal, physically write down five things that you're, that went well during the day. And so sometimes, even when the day has gone bad, we can think of five things that really went well. And that makes our mind more positive. And when we wake up in the morning, can we write down five things that we're truly grateful for? And once we have this as a regular practice, it's easy to be more positive through the entire day. We can also do breath work, and inner child work and Jayshree, who's one of our counselors and who you may have seen in a previous episode, she got cancer and she got a book by Louise Hay, which spoke about inner child work. And she connected to that immediately, worked on that, and that brought about her total remission from cancer. Also decluttering. Today we live in a world of um, commodification. Everything is a commodity. We want more and better. But when we live in nature, away from all those physical possessions, we actually feel so much better. 
even the stress levels go down. And that's what I experienced when I moved into nature from a busy city like Mumbai. So connecting with nature really helps. You may have noticed that when you hug trees or when you go out in nature, spend the day at the beach, you're much more relaxed, right? Because there's no stress in nature. And connecting to animals too, because they are so connected to the divine. They are, they, are, they are part of nature. And so when you connect with animals, you get that stress release. That's why, you know, like I'm so happy that I don't have any pets, but I have animals that constantly visit my house. I have a cat that often sleeps with me and a dog that sleeps in my room as well most of the time. And I realize that this connection with animals helps us to de-stress and helping others. When I was practicing homeopathy, I realized that so many people are, have much greater problems than we do. And so when we reduce our problem, when we, when we help others, we realize that our problems are not so, so big anymore. And that automatically helps us reduce stress. So Sharon always recommends a 100% plant-based diet and definitely to get that microbiome in place, whole foods and avoiding all harmful substances, which could be salt or sugar or white rice or white flour, all the refined packaged foods, we, can, we should avoid them. Now, how can Sharon help you? We have our website with lots of recipes, almost 600 recipes that you can go to. We also have a lot of information there. We have free publications that I'll show you soon. We have our YouTube channel with talks like this that can help you out of various physical problems as well. We have a WhatsApp broadcast list that you can subscribe to just by going to our website and going to the bottom and subscribing to our newsletters or WhatsApp broadcast list. We have lots of events and all these people who are with us are our facilitators who, uh, who conduct various events. And even if you're not in our time zone, you can get the recordings for these events. We also have consultations that can be done online, on Zoom, and Madhura is one of our nutritionists. I'm one of the doctors, but we have a team of doctors and nutritionists on board. We also conduct retreats like our 21-day retreat or shorter retreats as well. And we've had a lot of people coming from the US and all over the world to these retreats. And if you ever get a chance, do join us for some of them. Okay, I'm going to stop this share and invite Madhura to uh, tell us about the, um, the recipe that you're sharing and then show it to us. Welcome back, everybody. And today I'm going to show you an amazing recipe uh, of the Malai Peda. The recipe you will find, uh, it's on the Sharon website also under recipes and in the dessert section. You will find a number of amazing dessert recipes on the Sharon website. So do try them out. But you know, when we are feeling something like low and about, and you know, we don't feel like doing anything. I think this is one of the best recipes to try that time because it's a heatless recipe. You don't have to cook anything. It comes together very quickly and very few ingredients which are readily available all the time. If something is not available, guys, I'm going to tell you how quickly you can substitute it with whatever you have at home. So worry not. Also, please pay attention because I'm going to show you a variation which can truly, truly elevate your mood. So let's begin. So first, let's look into the ingredients. Uh, in the ingredients, uh, as you can see, there are a number of powders here, but they're very, very easy to make. Okay. So this is cashew powder. So if this is just raw cashews that you're going to blitz and make into a powder. 
so don't run your blender or grinder for a very long time otherwise you're going to get a butter you just have to pulse and blitz and you get a powder as fine as this okay then you're going to need some almond powder right this is also just whole raw almonds nothing you don't have to look out in the grocery store nothing just get raw almonds blitz it pulse it and if your uh, blender is not of a very high speed or voltage or watts just sieve it you know get the bigger pieces out and that you can use in your dressings or your curries or something else okay then i'm going to use something called as a desiccated coconut or coconut powder so here other than the fresh coconut you can use any of the other varieties okay this is readily available no worries at all then i'm going to use tofu so if you know or if you don't know malai peda is made with a uh, mawa so it's a very very dense milk product that is used and because of that it gets that uh, you know typical texture and flavor so we are going to replace that mawa with tofu now if you say madhura i'm not really fond of tofu and i'm not really fond of uh, you know any of the soy products worry not you can skip the tofu and you can just replace it with any of the nut butter you can just add one tablespoon of cashew butter or one tablespoon of almond butter and you will still have the same creamy amazing texture okay then as a sweetener i'm going to use uh, in india we call this as the kharik powder but in the us this is called as the date sugar okay so this is just dry dates which is blitz and made into a fine powder again if you are not getting the powder and you are getting the dry dates just grind them and sieve them and use the powder okay it's very very easy to make then because the kharik powder or the date sugar has a slight pungent or a little bit of you know different flavor it's not exactly completely sweet to balance that out and also as a binder we are going to use the date paste okay let me show you the texture of this this is a homemade date paste okay so this is very thick okay it's not falling off the spoon if you can see this is just soft dates that are blended with very little water okay the more water you use the more it is going to lose its sweetness okay and also you will not be able to bind the malai peda well so this is what we are going to use then some of the other ingredients that i'm going to use are i'm going to use a little bit of cardamom powder this is again for flavor and i'll tell you what you can substitute it when we make the variation i'm going to use a little bit of the unrefined salt this is just to balance out the sweetness and to garnish i'm going to use some whole pistachios okay so let's quickly put this together can you see this is very simple to make so i'm going to take a bowl okay and i'm going to just add all these powders now the recipe is all posted it's online but here don't get too worried about the quantities because you can see these ingredients can be eaten as is also so you can always go up and down a little bit so i'm just going to add the cashew powder okay let me make the whole batch because i have my family just loves it and so do my children i'm adding the almond powder now can you see uh, the quantity is almost the same how much ever cashew you add that much almond you add then i'm going to add the desiccated coconut this you can adjust i'm going to add half the quantity of the both the powders i'm going to add the tofu okay as i said if you don't like tofu so this is crumbled tofu you can uh, just use any of the nut butters here i have used the extra firm tofu don't use the silken or the just firm because then there is a lot of water in it and it will not really you know bind the malai peda then i'm adding the sweetener okay so make it sweet guys you know this is something to really really indulge don't worry about you know is it too sweet not sweet so please add the sweetener as per your taste then i'm adding the cardamom powder i'm very fond fond of cardamom so i am a little liberal with it and i'm adding a little bit of salt okay the salt is not to give the savoriness this is just to balance the sweetness now 
when we are low in mood right we are not feeling up to it the best way to do this is be tactile okay use clean hands i have washed my hands just before the demo use your clean hands and really you know massage the whole thing together so that you know you also put in your love there and you know the tactileness of the thing helps in elevating your mood so i'm just going to mix this i have yet not added the date paste okay i've just added the other ingredients now can you see it is still coming together we can still make a ball out of it but let's just mix this together now for the variation what i'm going to do is i'm going to take another bowl and i'm going to remove half of the powder this half of this mixture in another bowl okay so i've just removed half of it now i'm going to mix this more and in this i'm going to add a little bit of the date paste okay don't add too much at one time because we just are using this as a binder okay so mix 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 make it into a nice soft and you see it's coming together now it's making a dough now sometimes i'm also asked this question while making this recipe but madhura so many nuts are you really okay with us having because dr nandita said uh, i don't that you know we can't have too many nuts right so what you can do is if you're not a big fan of nuts or you feel you're overdoing the nuts you can always replace half of the nuts with seeds like you can grind some watermelon seeds or sunflower seeds if you do pumpkin seeds then the color will change can you see such a nice dough has come together right i'm going to just quickly rinse my hands so that's it guys this is the recipe as simple as this was now we are going to make malai pedas out of this and i'm going to just garnish it with one whole pistachio doesn't this look beautiful yes it does madhura and you know the whole demo went so well and i'm sure that lots of people will try this and really enjoy uh, making it yeah so i'm just going to show a couple more very quickly so my kids also love to make this but the variation that they make let me show you that very quickly so you remember this was half the powder that we the half the mixture that we kept aside so to this i am going to add some organic cacao powder who doesn't like cacao right guys right? and cacao is a mood elevator it really and that's why we head towards chocolates and chocolate ice cream so now you know what to do the next time you're feeling a little low please go and make some chocolate malai pedas so again i'm going to mix this really well please add the cocoa as much or as little as you like i like the bitterness of cocoa so just mix it really well and if you want the other thing you can do is instead of the cardamom powder you can add vanilla extract get pure vanilla extract and add that and if you are a cinnamon fan then even a pinch of cinnamon can elevate the taste so during raksha bandhan this is what my daughter makes for her brother because he just loves chocolate i'm going to add a little bit of date paste to this and that's it so let me just get the dough together 
and done. We have one more variation. Quickly, now just let me rinse my hands again. And while Madhura is doing that, I just want to share that Raksha Bandhan is a festival where um, brothers uh, brothers talk about protecting their sister and sisters make something nice to feed to their brothers. So it's a festival between brothers and sisters. And that that's what Madhura was referring to. Also, Malai is something which is like a condensed or... Uh, you know, milk that has been boiled down to a thickness of tofu. So imagine making the same thing without any dairy. Go ahead, Madhura. So now again, we're going to make the pedas out of this. So you can choose to make a different shape or you can make the same uh, flat shape that I did earlier. I'm just going to make it a little oblong. Okay, and what you can do is you can take the desiccated coconut and just roll it in that. So there you go. It will look like this. Oh, lovely. That's really awesome. So let me make one more and I can show you the plate. So this can be like, you know, something, an activity for your own self or, you know, you can actually impress your guests, your friends by making this delicious dessert. So the second one. Actually, let me show you how. That is awesome. Really awesome. Thank you very much for that, Madhura. Thank you so much. And I'm hoping you make it and you enjoy and you, you know post and share and how you liked it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and listening. I'm sure you'll enjoy the recipe because it, I know Madhura is a fantastic cook and she would never show something that was not out of this world. Madhura, thank you for the uh, the demo and I want to thank all the other Sharon facilitators as well and I hope and I want to thank all of you for joining us and staying till the end and I hope you all get free of stress, anxiety and depression or overcome it to the extent possible in this crazy world and enjoy the sweets as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's always an honor to be with you on this show. Bye, everyone.